I'm here again with Scott Herrick from x ray Pantone, who's gonna dive a little bit deeper into the x ray Exact, our flagship spectrophotometer. So Scott, take it away. All right, so one of the things, last things on the outside of this instrument that we wanna kinda of quickly talk about is, is the back part of this instrument uh, where all the connectors are. So number one, we have a, uh, a plug in here, here for the AC adapter. Now, you can plug your AC adapter in here if you'd like to have in cables connected. Um, or we have this charge plate, okay? So you can take your AC adapter and plug it into this charge plate, and then you can just leave your instrument sitting on top of that charge plate, and your instrument will stay charged up 24 7, seven days a week, and you will never have a problem with the batteries getting overcharged, the lithium ion batteries, and it just stays in the trickle charge mode. Okay? And if you leave it in that open position, will it automatically calibrate? Yes, as long as the instrument's up in that 24 hour period. Um, the instrument will then say, oh, I need to calibrate, and then it will stay in its calibration state, and it will calibrate. Now, if you do leave that instrument in a lockdown position, which we do have customers that do, um, then the instrument, I'm going to flip this over here and flip this under, you can see that the calibration plaque is not covering the optics. So, number one, you have a, a tendency to get, if you're in a dirty environment, dust can potentially get inside of that optic, so it's not really good to leave it locked down. And number two, if it does need to be calibrated, the cal plaque's not there, so it won't go through the calibration procedure, okay? So we like to tell customers just to kind of leave it in the up position, it will stay charged, and if it needs to calibrate, it will go ahead and calibrate. Now, so you can leave their plug your AC adapter in this and charge it up, or you can plug it in here and charge it up. This does have USB cable. Um, we actually got rid of the old RS-232 communications and actually put USB now. So this is USB, but we will also put uh, Bluetooth. So if you have this little kind of a sticker that says uh, it's got a, um, uh, contains a module and it's got the FCC numbers on there, that means your instrument actually has a Bluetooth module built into the instrument. So that way you can communicate this instrument to any computer using Bluetooth, okay? So with your charger right here, with this connected Bluetooth, you'll never have to plug any cables into an instrument to have it communicate with software, which is a really great feature. Uh, the back, the last button right here is the on and off button. That's what turns the instrument on and off. Uh, the instrument has a sleep mode. It's set defaulted at 20 minutes. So in 20 minutes, the instrument will sit there and in 20 minutes, the screen will go blank. Three times that number, which and that happens to be in an hour, um, the instrument will go into a deep sleep. It's not quite an off state, but it's about as close to an off state as you can get without actually pushing off the power. All right, last function on this is your target window. This target window does have the ability to pivot out and, and uh, go down. That concept is, is so I can take one of our scan chassis and stamp it on the bottom of this, and then I can turn this instrument in from a spot measurement mode into a scan mode where I can actually read color bars with it all in one. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. And Scott, why would a customer want a two millimeter aperture as opposed to a 1.5 or a four millimeter aperture for yeah. the target window? Well, it really kind of depends on the media that you're reading. So if you're in an ink room and you're doing drawdowns of large swatches of a drawdown, you don't really want a 1.5 millimeter. You really want the, uh, the four or the six millimeter aperture in the instrument. The bigger the aperture, the better, essentially. Uh, but when you're in a press room and you have a very small color patch, so maybe you're running a three mil by three mil patch, then the four millimeter aperture is too big. So then you would go down to a two mil. So it really kind of depends on the size of the patches you are trying to read, it, which is then drives which aperture size you would uh, pick for your instrument. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for the overview. And now we'll dive actually into the instrument and look at some of the features that the X-Rite Exact comes with. Thank you so much.